Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me for the continuation of the road to Zenvo. Off the back of confirming the specification for my Zenvo TSRS, today the manufacturing gets started. We're here in Prastu, the home of Zenvo in Denmark, and we're going to be taking a look at their carbon fiber wheels. Now the front 21 inch carbon wheel that we have just here weighs a mere 6.9 kilos. In fact, the full carbon wheel set that I've opted to go for on my car are actually 15 kilos lighter than Zenvo's already very light traditional wheel. Now I've opted for the 4x4 carbon weave, but today I'm going to be able to see the process, perhaps even get involved in what's needed to actually manufacture these here at Zenvo. It's early in the morning here in the assembly room, but we have the two TSRSs and I want to touch on the different wheel options available. So this is the default TSRS wheel. It's a lightweight design already having gone through a number of different iterations, of course, mounted here with the Michelin Cup 2R tires, the super sticky rubber. I've opted to go for the Cup 2 tires, still track focused, but a little bit more road orientated. We've got the center lock design. Now these aluminum wheels are pretty lightweight to begin with. The front wheels, 21 inches, are 9.65 kilos. The rear wheels are 12.15. Normally, those would be fairly light, all things considered, especially with the widths of them. But Zenvo go the extra mile, and the weights of these are just astounding. Honestly, I can come through and just pick up a wheel like it's nothing. This is a rear wheel, a hugely wide rear wheel made with the 4x4 carbon weave. So Zenvo's carbon wheels, the front one, as I said, is a mere 6.9 kilos. It's absolutely absolutely ridiculous how light this is. It's one finger light, hard to show, but I can literally hold that with just one finger. That's the chopped or forged fragmented carbon fiber style. The rears are only 7.75. You do shave 15 kilos changing to the carbon fiber wheels and that's all unsprung mass, of course, a big change in terms of driving dynamics. And it's fantastic to see how these are made, which is what we're going to be doing today, heading into the assembly room where they are actually put together, where they do the carbon fiber work to ultimately create results like this on the car. Mounted up here also with the Cup 2Rs, but we have the lovely centre locks. Mine are actually going to have the S here painted in green, the lime green to match the accents against the purple, the lila perla more that my car will be painted in. So some lovely details and touches all around the car. And of course, I'm gonna have the matching lime green calipers as well. This is the fragmented carbon, which actually takes longer to create than the four x four weave. I've gone for the four x four weave to match up with all of the other exterior carbon that I've chosen to have on the car. But it's amazing to see these. For now though, Let's head through to get more of an understanding of how these are actually made. As we make our way through, this is the early stage of the process where the bodies are all lined up, the carbon fiber bodywork, and obviously everything being prepared before they will then go to the paint shop. We're going to skip straight through though to go to the carbon fiber assembly. To show this process, I'm here with Christian, head of design at Zenvo. Hi Tim, welcome to the carbon department of Zenvo Automotive. I'm gonna show you through the wheel manufacturing process. And just behind us here, we have the um, some of our wheels. This is the, the finished item and the wheel to the right is um, the step before applying the last layer of carbon fiber which goes all the way around here to the, uh, to the, to the area where the tire is uh, sitting. And you can see right here now we have, we have holes into the spokes and of course you can't have that because then the, the tire can't seal. So there's a lot of extra carbon applied and then you put it in a, in a lathe basically and you, you, you turn the whole, the whole profile so that it, uh, it seals correctly with the tire. But to even get this far, yeah. there's a lot of the process that had to have happened yes. before. Yeah, let's, let's have a look at that. Uh, it starts all in this uh, 2D cutting machine which is basically cutting the uh, carbon fiber uh, material. This is a pre-prec carbon fiber material. It has the resin embedded into, into the material. Uh, which means you have to, when you get it out of the freezer where it sits, it has to be, you know, worked on in, a, in something like two days, otherwise it's, it starts to harden. And basically what you see over here in the other end of the room is um, two of our technicians working on the, uh, the molds for the, uh, for the wheel. And this uh, is where you make all carbon fiber as well? This is the area where we do all the parts for the car. The autoclave in the background is where we do all the body parts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and um, yeah, here we're doing the, uh, the front part of the wheel, which is what is facing out. And that's the, 
the back part, which is, which is the, the back side. And over there, you see the two mold parts put together so that uh, the wheel is, is complete. And these are literally the wheels for my car, aren't they? They are. <laughs> That's yeah. already quite exciting. It is. It is. There's 500 individual carbon pieces in one wheel, so um, there's a lot of layers that have to be applied. 500 parts, as we see. So what kind of time does that take? It takes uh, one, one technician a week to do one wheel. Okay, wow. Yeah. But it creates something that has that rigidity, yes. that lightweight. Yes, absolutely. I think we can see parts of this. We can see parts of the process, not necessarily all of the process. Well, yeah, we can see the layering up of the front side and on the back side. And then there's a little bit of a trade secret in how we join the two parts together. So uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we can't show that. Amazing. Well, let's see a little bit more of how all of this works. This is where it begins at the CNC machine with the prepreg carbon fiber. As Christian said, that has to be stored in the appropriate freezer. It only has a certain amount of time before it's no longer usable, but this cuts out over 500 shapes to make each individual wheel for all of the different layers and all of the different elements. And you can see the way here, we've got these shapes that obviously have had to be prepared and to be developed really, to go through various different iterations to create the final result of the wheel. This process takes a short time to cut out the pieces, each of which then gets taken out the excess material discarded and then taken over to the wheels to be assembled, which is where we will be heading very shortly. It's time to get involved in this then. So over here, Caesar is working on the first layer, which is the visual layer. Absolutely critical to get this right. So I'm certainly going to give that one a miss. Obviously that is going to be what you see effectively from the other side, but we're going to come through to the spokes where Magnus is going to give us a bit of a demonstration. I'll show you the next step from the visual layer we start putting the backing layers, which is giving the strength of the wheel. This is just the cosmetic part. Uh, I can put a piece, and then maybe, Tim, you put one yourself. <laughs> uh, Fingers crossed yeah. I can do this. So let's see, so, so this is where we've got all the material that's come yeah. from the CNC machine. All the parts straight from the CNC are cut to size. Take the backing plastic off, and we have to line it up exactly the same way around all the pieces so we get the same balance in the wheel and mm -hmm. just press it down into place yeah make sure it's in the right place and then press it down wow give it a bit of an extra press in the corners to make sure and that's effectively layering it up that's one of the uh i guess easier pieces yeah. with less curvature and shape yeah, yeah. and it's pretty much just a flat piece so that's how you do it. Yep. So <laughs> if you want to try. Does that mean I'm going to give this one a go? So I need to grab some gloves. Yep. Glove up. Grab some gloves quickly. Make sure we do this properly because it's slightly sticky, the yeah. pre preg. Resin already infused. I don't have the skills for putting the gloves on either. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the wrong size. <laughs> it's okay. Right. So we get these on. And if you wanted to sign it. Yeah. <laughs> Before you put it on. Pop a little signature. Oh, wow, okay. So we'll pop a little signature on the piece that's going to go onto one of the front wheels for the car. This is really cool. So, um, there we go. <laughs> All right, so you take this. This part here. Line it up from the top. Yeah, these two small curves. Make sure they line, line up. Like this? Yes, perfect. Press it down there. And then press it down all the way through. Yep. Make sure it's in the middle. Are we in the middle? Yeah. Is that all this good? Looks good. <clears throat> press it down, then you tuck this in up the top. Yep. Just press it so it forms around. Exactly. Like this. And then give it a little press. Take the tool the with the corners. end. Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? Perfect. That's all you do? Yeah. I say all <laughs> I you do. do. <laughs> That's all you do. Easiest part. <laughs> for that part, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's all you do for that part. So, wow. Do that for another week or two and you have a completed wheel. Exactly. Amazing. And then I need to make three more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fast forward a little bit then. And this is after it's come out of the clave. And we can see, wow, look at that. The finish, obviously, of the inside of the barrel and the center of the spokes. 
incredible. This is obviously before it's been trimmed and attached to the mold. That's really cool. So this is one of the rear wheels for my car at a slightly later stage, obviously with the weave on the front face, as we've seen, has to go through that process. And then it will be trimmed up. And as we heard from Christian earlier, this will be filled to give it the strength and the shape that it needs to wear the Cup 2 tires. Can we take a look at the machine you have here? Yes, you're welcome to. This is a machine we built for testing the uh, corner rigidity of uh, the wheels uh, when we were developing the carbon wheels. It's one of the tests that you, that you, um, that you use for finding out if, if a wheel is strong enough. And basically what it, the way it is is that you have this massive uh, arm uh, that you see down there, which is connected to the center of the wheel. And then you hold the wheel on the back edge. And then you basically take that arm down there and then you rotate it like this. And, and if we set a normal alloy wheel into this jig, it's really amazing how much the whole center can actually move. It has to be able to do that because you imagine when you're driving and you're cornering yeah. high speed, get a huge force on, the, on, the, on that front wheel and sort of pushing it underneath the car. Yeah. And of course, it needs to be able to withstand that. So in the process of developing the carbon wheel, and because, of course, you always have a name between you want it to be lightweight, but you want it to be rigid and, and preferably more rigid than the alloy wheel that it it's, mm -hmm. has an equivalent with. So we had to find out how many layers we had to do to achieve a higher rigidity than the alloy wheel. So we were trying a lot of different layer up, layering ups and how many layers was to the back side, to the front side, and et cetera, et cetera. And then we were just torturing it in this yes. one until it broke. <laughs> so basically shaking the wheel around until yeah. you yeah. find the, the final result. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating to be able to, I guess, go through that process. Yes, and because they, they, you know, in Denmark we don't have a lot of automotive industry, so also to test this, and of course there are test institutes, maybe preferably in Germany, that, that can do this stuff, but you know, every time we hadn't made a new one, we had to go to Munich or something to, to test it. Mm -hmm. So it made perfect sense to build the jig that could simulate this process, so we had it in-house. And this way we could cut down the development side quite, quite significantly. Yeah, and also obviously then produce these fantastic carbon fiber wheels, which save so much weight in the car. Absolutely. After we've done all of the layers, what yeah. happens next? Well, next you have to vacuum pack the parts. So this is uh, one of your seats, it's packed here. Wow. So you see all this uh, plastic is basically sucked around the part, then it's inserted into the autoclave, then it's baked. Once it's baked, you have to remove all this packing material. We're not going to do that on video because it makes a hell of a lot of noise. <laughs> but anyway, when the parts come out, they look like uh, what we see on the table over here. And all these parts that are sitting on this table is for your car. Oh, really? So these two parts are what we internally refer to as the ears. It's the extension of the side window. So this is the part without yeah. the fuel cap, fuel and this cap. is with the fuel cap. That must be the armrest. This is exactly the armrest. And this is the rear lights. And of course, what you can see here is that it has these very rough edges because that's how it's done in the process. But you can also see there's a thin line going here. And uh, this is where we manually cut very precisely after this mm -hmm. line. So every part is exactly the same. Um, this is interesting parts. And like, uh, this is actually the, um, the uh, gear shift paddles for the steering wheel. So there's a front side and a back side, and then you glue the two uh, sort of not so nice sides, the, the, the back sides, you glue those together so you have only perfect sides. And again, you can see this is a huge part, but you can see that there's a little outline. But even like this, the, um, it, it weighs next to nothing. Yes, exactly. And, and I know in the future, these are going to be the source of lots of fun, fireballs and... <laughs> absolutely, absolutely they are. Uh, this is uh, parts for the floor of the car. This is the footwell of the uh, passenger side. This ah, okay. is the footwell of the... Um, Driver side. The driver side with the rest for the speeder mm -hmm. and so on. Um, and this is actually the, the, uh, the armrest that you would have sitting inside the car. So you would have your hand here when you're in the, in the passenger side. Yeah. This is the space for the loudspeaker. Uh, again, this will be cut out so there's room for the speaker itself. So, um, and all of these components weigh next to nothing. It's, it's hard to really yeah. portray, but that's the beauty of carbon fiber, the strength of it. Yeah. And, yeah. and being very lightweight. And then these go, they all get trimmed up, yeah. finished up, and yeah. they'll find their way in the car. 
they will. This is exactly what the Road to Zenvo series is all about. What an amazing opportunity to see behind the scenes of the carbon fibre wheel manufacturing and to be a small part of it myself as well. Just the beginning of what we've got to come. Now, out of the three existing Zenvo TSRSs, the white and blue car here is the one with the carbon fibre wheels with the fragmented carbon. So mine will be the first with the 4x4 carbon wheel. But one thing I would quite like to show you with the wheel is to pop it up onto some scales to show you exactly exactly how light this is so that you can see the 6.9 kilos of figure. Let me just pop it here for a second, turn on the scales. We will make sure this is fully zeroed. We're in grams and pop the wheel on here and wait for this. No joke, 6.9 kilos for a front wheel on the Zenvo TSRS. And this is with the valve as well. That is absurdly light. 6.9 kilos for the front, 7.75 kilos for the rear carbon wheel, 29.3 kilos for the set of four, about 15 kilos lighter than your normal alloy wheel. Absolutely ridiculous. And all part, of course, of creating something as special as this. A car that, needless to say, I'm very much looking forward to. And in fact, at our next update, the next part of the Road to Zembo series, I think we should be able to see my car itself with some of the colour taking shape. The Lila Perlamore with the Lime Gron accents. And it's going to be very special. That's it for now, though. A huge thanks to the team here today, to Christian, to Magnus and to Caesar for the opportunity to see some of that process. Really, really cool and just beyond exciting, hard to put into words. So thank you very much for joining me. As always, guys, I appreciate your support an awful lot. That's it for this time though, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.